basically category three, four, or five, the major hurricane categories uh, are considered major because of the significant amount of damage that the hurricane can do in terms of structural damage, not only tree damage, but structural damage to homes and buildings and the infrastructure. So at this point, if it weakens back to category three as it moves to the north, the, the overall impact may be lessened somewhat, but it's still going to be a significant event. So let's get back to where we were on the uh, forecast track, and here is 8 a.m. And so once again, the red area, the hurricane force winds, here's the hurricane force gusts. And I know there's a lot of people listening on radio, so it, uh, I'm, I'm converting my brain into visual speak, let's put it. What I say here is all of the keys covered by the hurricane force winds. Extreme southwest Miami Dade hurricane force winds. Much of Miami Dade and into Broward hurricane force gusts. So that's winds of 50 to 60 miles an hour with gusts uh, over 75 miles an hour. And then Broward into Palm Beach County at this time at 8 a.m. Uh, winds are anywhere from 40 to 60 miles an hour with gusts close to 80. So let's go forward a little bit in time here. There's 9 a.m., 10 a.m., and we'll stop there at noon. So there's noon, and basically uh, the, this line right here that I'm drawing, which is 25 degrees north, goes almost through Key Largo. So it's the, the, the center of the storm is almost parallel to that line, maybe a little bit above it. So we're approaching our closest approach to South Florida, meaning the hurricane's not going to get any closer to us. It's not going to get any further away, farther away from us in Miami-Dade. And so the worst of the weather now is coming in Miami-Dade. We're going to we'll see tremendous rain bands coming in, very, very strong wind gusts. Uh, all of Miami-Dade and much of Broward now at noon today is in the hurricane force wind gust band there. That's the uh, 50 to 70 mile an hour winds with gusts to 90. I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see some gusts in some of the heavier squalls above 100 miles an hour. And then in Palm Beach County, still tropical storm force winds. And the center now between Naples and Key West and moving slowly to the north northwest. So let's move a little bit more forward here. There's 2 p.m., 3 p.m., uh, 4 p.m. Okay, you can stop there, 5 p.m. So because the storm is moving a little bit slower now, we're going to deal with the, the uh, worst impacts here in South Florida, Miami-Dade, Broward, Palm Beach, a little bit longer. It's going to be a long day of very strong winds and very strong wind gusts. From the Keys through Miami-Dade, through Broward, through Palm Beach County, the Keys, though, will be seeing their winds coming down. Although the storm surge could still be continuing, the storm surge by late in the day today will begin to be receding. But uh, meanwhile, on the West Coast, the storm is at its closest to approach now to Naples, if not over Naples, and of course the core is the thing we're concerned about, that eye wall, that's the part of the hurricane that's going to be doing a tremendous amount of destruction. Now approaching Fort Myers, and let's go forward into time here once again, so we're at 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m., let's stop at 9 p.m., or that's a good point. Okay, so we're at 8 p.m. now. So the Keys now have tropical storm force winds. Finally, the winds are only in the, and I say finally, but considering what's coming, only in the 40 to 60 mile an hour range. Uh, Miami-Dade is in the 40 to 60 mile an hour range, and Broward as well, 40 to 60 mile, mile an hour range, uh, maybe a little bit heavier, up to 70 in some higher gusts. All right, so let's go forward here because the implications to the Tampa Bay area remain extreme, and that is, uh, once again, we're looking at Category 4 intensity near the mouth of Tampa Bay at midnight, 1 a.m. tonight. So the issue is, is that the European model, which is nearly outperformed the USGFS model by a factor of two. It has been twice as good in its forecast points so far with Irma. It's forecasting a westward shift up here along the west coast of Florida. Why is that significant? Because <clears throat> the storm stays over water longer, the storm is able to maintain its intensity longer, and there's a tremendous storm surge event following the hurricane on the way up the coast. On the back side of the hurricane, we have these winds that are blowing onshore, and ahead of the hurricane, they're blowing offshore. And if the hurricane follows that track as it's approaching Tampa Bay, it's likely that the water will go rushing out of Tampa Bay and the bay will begin to drain. And then once the storm reaches Tampa Bay and goes north, the water will come back in with tremendous force and, and begin to flood the bay again and then go outside of the bay. So there we are at 2 a.m. The forecast intensity is category three, but still a major hurricane. And now the storm is north of the bay, and so the water's coming, rushing back in, but also pounding the coast there. 
Uh, let's go a little bit further to the north because uh, we've got people who have fled the storm to Ocala, uh, Gainesville. Uh, we're in the Big Bend area here, and this is 8 a.m. on Monday. In South Florida, it is a very breezy day by typical standards. We would call it windy down here. So this is tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Uh, the winds are 20 to 30 miles an hour and some gusts higher, but it's, it's tolerable. Same story for the Keys, but in North Florida, as the sun is coming up, hurricane force gusts are bearing down on Tallahassee, Gainesville, Ocala, already seeing them, and there's a storm surge threat continuing up into the Big Bend area here of north, uh, the northeast Gulf of Mexico. And let's go a little bit further here, and you can see uh, the cone there, and we're widening out. So now the forecast is, with a little bit of this westward shift, that a Category 1 is possible into the Florida panhandle there from either, uh, uh, this is Apalachicola over here, back east down through the panhandle. So uh, Tallahassee now, for folks who fled to Tallahassee, are under the threat of a hurricane. And really the only area of the entire peninsula is basically uh, from about Fort Walton Beach towards Pensacola. And if there's a continued westward shift of this whole thing, uh, they could be under the gun too. Uh, all it would take is, because this is the cone we've got outlined here, all it would take would be the storm to work its way over to the left side of the cone, and now you've moved the whole wind field on over there to the left.